Masking is an important technique for isolating parts of your images in Affinity Photo. Take a look at how to do this with compound masks. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about compound masks in Affinity Photo. Now this was released in version 2.0, so make sure you're on that edition of the software if you wanna use this feature. Now before we talk about compound masks, let's look at normal masks for a moment and see a potential shortcoming of how they work. So I have this image here, and let's just say for organizational purposes, I wanna create a separate mask for each of the balls here. So I'll do my selection brush tool, and I'll just select one of them, and I'll click the mask layer button, and I'll call this the tennis ball. So I'll hide that. Let's create another one for the basketball here. So I'll just select this. I'll create another mask. I'll call it basketball and I'll unselect it. And let's do one for the baseball over here. So I have my three masks over here. Let's say I just wanted to show these three balls next to each other and not have the background. Well, I guess what I would try to do is just turn on all the masks, right? So I'll turn on my tennis ball. That worked pretty well. Now let's turn on the basketball. And what happens when I turn on the basketball is you see nothing appears. In fact, even the tennis ball disappears. If I click on the baseball, again, nothing happens. Now, if I click off the basketball and click off the tennis ball, I can see the baseball here. In fact, it kind of seems like I can only see one at a time. So what's going on here with these masks? Well, we can actually use multiple masks at once, but the catch is that the deletion part of the mask is taking priority. So this is my tennis ball mask. You can see I have the white area and the black area. If I go to my basketball mask, you can see this is the white area and the black area. But when I turn them on together, the black areas overlap, so you don't see anything. So as you stack masks together, the black part takes precedence and everything is kind of erasing the other stuff around it. Now, wouldn't it be cool if there was a little button here that said, add the white part of the mask in and ignore the black? Well, that's exactly what a compound mask does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a compound mask. And the way I do that is you right click on the mask layer here and you select compound mask. So with this compound mask here, what you can do is you can drag other masks into it. So let's start with the tennis ball, I'll drag the tennis ball in here and I'll turn the tennis ball on. So you can see I'm seeing the tennis ball. So far, not much different, but let's drag the baseball in. So I'll drag the baseball in. Now I'll turn the baseball on and you can see we have the baseball appearing and I'll drag the basketball in. I'll turn it on. Now you can see the basketball is appearing. So if I alt click on the compound mask, you can actually see the cumulative effect of all these masks under it. So we've gotten that effect we wanted. We've added all these masks together. Now, why did that actually happen? Well, the reason they were added together is because of this little icon here. If I hover over it, you can see it says add. And when it says add, what it means is that it's adding the white part of your mask to the layer below it. And it's ignoring the black part. So you can think of the black part as being zero and the white part as being one. It's adding the one to the layer below it, which is gonna be something. And the black is zero, so it's just adding nothing to the layer below it. So by default, this operation here is add, so it's gonna add up your masks together. So the other options we have are subtract, intersect, and XOR. Let's look at subtract. So I'll create a new mask to begin with. So something you notice is when I added this new mask in directly into the compound mask, it came in as an add. And because it's all white by default, it just added in everything back to our mask. So to do subtract, what I can do is I can actually change this to subtract. But now we have the opposite effect. Our completely white mask is erasing everything below it. So if it's subtracting, I wanna make this all black to have no effect. So I'm just gonna control I on that. That'll invert the mask. So control I on a white mask will make it black. Control I. I'll call this my erase mask so you can see. Now, if I look at my erase mask, it's a little tricky because it's all black and usually black erases, but we're doing the subtract mode. So this is going to take white parts of our image and subtract it from the content below. So let's look at our mask again. So we haven't done anything with this erase mask. Let's actually do something with it. I have my brush selected. I'll select white. And now if I drag across my erase mask, you can see I'm actually erasing. So what's happening if I look at my erase mask, I have this white line here, and normally white is going to be added to the content below it, but because I have it as subtract, this white part is being subtracted from the parts below it. So if I alt click on the compound mask, I can see the cumulative effect. The white was being added for these layers below, and then the white was being subtracted for this erase mask, and this is the end result. Now, in addition to add and subtract, there's two other settings, intersect and XOR. Those are a little beyond the scope of the video, but if you're familiar with Boolean operations, they operate in the same way. If you're just getting started with compound groups, I think add and subtract are more than enough to begin with. 
Now there are many uses for compound masks. One way to use them is to clean up the results of a live mask layer, such as a luminosity mask or a hue range mask. We can also apply the results to an adjustment layer. So let's look at how to do that here. So I have this image here and I'll create a luminosity range mask for it. Now I have a full video on luminosity range masks. So be sure to watch that one if you're not familiar with this concept. Now, before I get started, one thing I like to do is just add a green pixel layer below my image because it makes it a little easier to see which part is actually transparent. So let me do that here. So I'll put my image back there. So with my image selected here, I'm gonna right click on this mask layer option. I'm gonna select luminosity range mask and I'll click preview and I'll move the liner a little bit. What this lets us do is create a mask based on the brightness of our image. So the sky is very bright and the ground is very dark. I can create a mask based on that concept. So here we have a pretty good separation of the ground and the sky. So let's start with that. Now I'm gonna create a compound mask and I'm gonna add and subtract to this mask to make it look a little bit better. So I'll right click on this here. Let's use compound mask. And I'll put the luminosity range mask inside the compound mask. So we saw the luminosity range mask here. Let's add a mask to the top to make it more white here. So I'll add a mask. I'm gonna invert it because I wanna fill it with black to begin with. So we can see all this green up here is where the sky is falling apart here. Let me select the paintbrush tool. I'll select white. And let's fill it in better. So I just got manually painted in here. So if I look at my compound mask, this is the combined effect of my luminosity range mask and my additional mask. So this is my original luminosity mask. And this is my combined mask up here. Now we have these lines in the road and stuff like down here. Let's say I want to get rid of that. So what I can do is I can add a mask again. Now I can see it's all white by default, so it just added the whole thing in. I wanna start subtracting things, so I'm gonna select subtract. And again, because it's all white, it subtracted everything. So I'm gonna invert it with control I. So I'll just rename these, I'll say sky addition. And I'll call this other layer ground deletion. So I'll select my paintbrush, I'll select white, and I can start cleaning up this area a little bit. So now in our final result, we have a much cleaner separation of the sky and the ground. And I can see a little area I want to, here I want to clean up. So to do that, this would be my sky addition. So I go here, paint white, and I can fix it. So that's our compound mask. So let's say I want to add a curves adjustment to my image here. So I'll do that. So I'll add an adjustment, curves. And I can make it very extreme. I'll just do that for the moment so you can see the effect it's having. So very extreme curves effect there. But if I take my compound mask, if I apply it to the adjustment, and then I turn my compound mask on, you can see the curves adjustment is just affecting the sky now. So I'll go back to my curves. Watch as I move it around, only the sky is changing. So I'll reset this. Maybe I want to add some more contrast to the sky. So I'll toggle on and off, before, after, before, after. And you can see we isolated that effect just to the sky by using this compound mask. And I'll alt click on it. And this is the final mask we used. It was built from a luminosity range mask. And then we did some touch ups. We did some additions to the top part for the sky. And then we did some deletions to the bottom part for the ground. Now the last type of mask I haven't talked about on this channel is the bandpass mask. So if you right click on the mask button here, you can choose bandpass mask. And here you have the options for low band and high band filtering. I have a video coming up on this topic, so be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified when that comes out. There will be a lot of useful concepts in that one. And if you have any questions about compound masks, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.